this week with markets still on track for gains for the week. But let's take a look at some of the morning movers. Joining us now for that senior markets correspondent, we've got Renita Young in action. So Apple's in focus today, Renita. Pulled back yesterday, but... We've got some bullish sentiment around this, right? Absolutely, and coming primarily from Bernstein this morning, who boosted its price target on Apple to $240 from $195 and kept it an outperform rating. Now, this analyst notes how Apple has outperformed the S&P 500 since second quarter earnings, not the full year, but since second quarter earnings. And that includes a substantial gain after the Worldwide Developers Conference happened on June 10th. And the analyst believes that shares are no longer inexpensive versus what they have been in recent history. The primary reason, Bernstein believes, is these investors being incredibly enthusiastic about Apple being an AI leader now. A lot of times, or a lot over the past few months, we wondered what was Apple's AI play. And now that we have it, these investors believe that Apple can actually become an AI leader. In fact, Bernstein said that it's increasingly convinced that Apple will be an AI beneficiary. I don't know to the degree of NVIDIA or not, but certainly so. It sees risk, however, over at Bernstein that the benefits could actually take longer to materialize than some bulls appear to believe. Why? Because many of the features for Apple's Apple intelligence rolling out of the next year, they're only going to be in English. They'll only work in English, and that potentially shuts out a huge market um, and potentially pushes out some upgraders to the iPhone 17 cycle. That's the word from Bernstein this morning, but still bullish on this stock, keeping it at an outperform rating and boosting the price target. Diane. After Apple's amazing worldwide developers conference, where the company revealed its AI plans, Apple briefly surpassed Microsoft and became the world's most valuable company as its stock soared to over $200, but it didn't hold until the close. Investors had long been waiting for Apple to unveil its AI plans after competitors at Microsoft and Google had already done so, and the company didn't disappoint with its announcements, which led many analysts to revise their price targets for Apple stock and tell investors to buy it. In today's video, we're going to go over some analysts who recently upgraded their Apple stock price targets and talk about whether the stock is now a buy after the company's AI announcements. But before we get into today's video, if you want to keep up with Apple's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now, back to today's video. Well, Apple certainly had to play catch up one mm -hmm. on obviously the AI front because there were all these questions. Uh, from last year through this year about right. where was Apple, where is it on AI, and they've said, oh, we've been in the game, but uh, investors wanted to hear more, and now they finally came to the plate with Apple Intelligence. So, you know, there's still some questions around it, but mm -hmm. the stock has certainly come back and regained some ground since April, right, Renita? It absolutely has, you know, since um, April it's gained, and it has been outperforming the S&P 500 since those second quarter earnings. Um, but we'll see how it continues, whether or not Apple Intelligence takes it through the roof or not. Oh, yep, that will be one to watch. Uh, Apple up nearly 14% year-to-date. Uh, Renita Young, thank you. After the Worldwide Developers Conference, investment bank Needham & Company reissued their buy rating on Apple shares and their $220 price target, which implies a small upside of 3.25%. On the other hand, Tankress Financial lifted their price target on Apple from $240 to $245 and gave the company a strong buy rating, while analysts at Goldman Sachs said that they project continued cash flow growth for Apple, which should speed up for the company in its third quarter. Also, D.A. Davidson analyst Gil Luria upgraded Apple's rating from neutral to buy, stating that the AI features the company showcased have sparked consumer interest in the next-generation iPhone. Luria noted that these AI functionalities might drive a much-needed iPhone upgrade cycle, serving as a growth catalyst investors have been anticipating. Apple, with its extensive consumer data and trusted brand, is well-positioned to deliver deeply integrated features that standalone chat apps, PCs, and Android devices might struggle to replicate. 
DA Davidson's price target is $230, and analysts at Morgan Stanley also echoed the sentiment. They said that Apple's AI capabilities will incentivize consumers to upgrade their iPhones, accelerating the device replacement cycle. While some enhancements are still required before the AI features debut in the fall, the foundation for sustained superior performance and growth is in place. Morgan Stanley remains confident in their overweight rating, a $216 price target, and a $270 bull case valuation for Apple. Deepwater Asset Management's Gene Munster also has suggested Apple may be a more favorable choice than NVIDIA over the long term and suggested that Apple would offer higher returns due to underestimated AI potential. Additionally, Wedbush analyst Dan Ives said that the addition of these new tools to the iPhone will spark an AI-driven iPhone upgrade cycle starting with iPhone 16. The analyst also suggested AI will add $30 to $40 per share to Apple's growth story. So, should investors follow suit and buy shares of Apple stock just because these analysts recommend it? Let's find out. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy. Seems like a pain to have to, to be a uh, almost a, a bank in terms of lending standards and everything else. Is this a smart move for Apple to, to, to outsource it to a third party, do you think, Dan? Good morning, Joe. I, I do think in this case it probably makes more sense to work with partners to, to drive uh, more options for their customers. If we look at the company, the announcements around Apple intelligence really uh, evolving the user experience to the next level with this continued integration of hardware, software, and services. I think the story sets up well as we look into the latter part of this year and 2025 with, with Apple intelligence uh, contributing to, to a richer user experience with uh, a better Siri uh, advancements in, in uh, Genmojis, uh, writing, um, and, and so a whole host of other things I think will drive continued growth of the install base, which sets up for revenue growth as we look ahead. So I continue to like the name. While it's undeniable that Apple's new AI strategy will greatly help the company, there are a lot more reasons why Apple stock is a buy right now. First of all, the company is greatly improving its financials. Although Apple has seen drops in revenue over multiple quarters, the truth is that Apple continues to generate huge amounts of cash. In fact, revenue from services is growing, offsetting weaknesses in other areas of the business, leading to strong and improving margins. Over the past three months, Apple's trajectory, from a stock price perspective, has been solid and greater ETF investing trends could bode well for those looking for secular tailwinds that should persist. Apple is certainly not a cheap stock, as it's trading at 22 times forward EBITDA. But investors are clearly paying up for quality. And until that changes, the company's improving financial picture could spur greater demand for its shares moving forward. Additionally, Morgan Stanley analysts point out that it's historically been a smart move to buy Apple shares around this time of year, coming off the technology giant's developer conference. They're extremely right to say this. In fact, over the last 10 years, about half of the stock's outperformance against the broad S&P 500 has come in the three months following the annual Worldwide Developers Conference. And while decreasing iPhone sales in China, Apple's third-largest market has been a topic of much scrutiny since last year as Chinese consumers have increasingly turned to domestic smartphone companies, the issue seems to be resolving and leaning in Apple's favor. This is because on May 28, Bloomberg reported that iPhone sales in China soared 52% last month after a series of discounts from Apple. While discounts are often a short-term solution to a problem, Apple's product connectivity and services show that recent buyers will remain with the company. Apple has strategically created an interconnected ecosystem for its products that encourages users to branch out to its many other devices after only purchasing one. Meanwhile, services like iCloud, Apple TV+, Music, and even the App Store allow the company to keep making money even if consumers decide not to upgrade their devices. As a result, the spike in Chinese sales could see Apple remain a threat in China for years. If you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. And the, I don't know if we've talked to you uh, 
since we saw Apple's plans for AI. And, and I just wondered if that played out uh, the way that, that you thought it would, because it, initially it seemed like the perception was that Apple was a little bit late and, and wasn't developing things in-house and was behind the curve. And suddenly the, when they outlined their plans, the stock you know, rocketed to, to new, new all-time highs. Uh, based on that, and, and I, I just wonder, what, what do you think investors took away from uh, the way that Apple is approaching AI? Maybe it's good not to be, you know, spending billions of your own money to try to, to, to develop. It reminds me of streaming. People, it's like if you weren't in streaming, you were an idiot, and then, you know, a year later, if you were in streaming, you were, you were an idiot. It, it's crazy. Joe, I think their history suggests that they would rather be more deliberate in terms of introducing a product and service and getting the experience right. You saw that with the iPod a couple of decades ago, the iPhone, the iPad, and all of the products since. And I think what you're seeing now is exactly the same thing. They're focused on trying to balance the capabilities of artificial intelligence, uh, coupled with doing it in a secure, personalized way where, where users will feel confident uh, about the overall experience and the use of their data. The other important thing, which was positive last week, is that they're continuing to bring more tools to the developers. And this really speaks to driving and, and creating a, a vibrant ecosystem that people can build on top of. And so taking the devices, the services, the developer community, putting all of that together, in my view, lays a strong foundation for the next wave of growth over the next 24 months. This will take time to play out, Joe, but I think the company's approaching it in a thoughtful way. And that's gonna be the next uh, driver for, for Apple stock AI, or is it something else? Is it expanding the ecosystem? Is it, I don't know, a new iPhone, a new, a new uh, upgrade cycle? What is it that, that takes Apple to the next level? I think it's a broadening, uh, or rather continued broadening of the revenue drivers. Artificial intelligence uh, on its own, I don't think is sufficient. The key is that the install base is growing. And so the math around that is even with extended replacement cycles, you can, you can uh, generate over 200 million iPhone unit sales a year. More and more customers have, have been mixing up to the Pro and Pro Max, um, which helps ASPs. And that continues, in my view. You then layer on artificial intelligence, and that could be an incremental driver over the next 12 to 24 months. The key, though, is if you look at services, a $100 billion business, uh, which is growing double digits. Uh, Mac, I think, is healthy. iPad, you just had new products introduced. Wearables, in some ways, is just getting going. So it's this broadening of the drive, uh, growth drivers, Joe, and infusing AI across all of these uh, devices and services. That drives growth, in my view, and sets the stock up well. We can't deny that there are concerns around Apple's valuation, and for good reason. The company has seen slower and expected growth in recent years, with revenue actually declining on a year-over-year -year basis during recent quarters. However, Apple's mix has improved, with the company's services segment seeing 14% year-over-year growth, driving strong margins and profitability. With an upward trend in place in the broader markets and capital continuing to flow into the largest cap names, we think that Apple is positioned well as a relatively defensive option in this space. Let's also keep in mind that the global smartphone market reported 7.8% year-over-year growth in Q1 of 2024, following a 3% decline last year, according to IDC. The market research firm is forecasting a 2.8% increase in smartphone sales this year, but there is a good chance the market could see stronger growth thanks to AI-enabled smartphones. In fact, IDC estimates that 170 million AI smartphones could be shipped in 2024, accounting for 15% of the overall market. And that's not all, because according to CounterPoint Research, that number is expected to head higher impressively in the future, with shipments forecasted to jump 4x in the next four years. More importantly, CounterPoint is expecting Apple to become the leading player in the AI smartphone market in 2025. For these reasons, investors should consider buying Apple stock as it could potentially soar in the future thanks to the rapidly growing AI smartphones market. But what do you think about Apple stock? 
Is it a buy at the current price? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, and don't forget to tell us what your valuation for Apple is. If you would like to know what companies like Apple have been up to these past few days, go ahead and click on the next video on your screen. See you there.